Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praying together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We'll have a, a moment of silence and let the busyness of the week, the things that are weighing heavily on our hearts and minds, uh, fall away a bit as we continue to come into Christ's presence. Hmm. Almighty God, you gave your only son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly living. Give us grace, thankfully to receive his inestimable benefits and daily to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are blind, yet have eyes, who are deaf, yet have ears. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right, and let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you and you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and I am God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 116 responsibly. I said in my alarm, What shall I render to the Lord? For all his benefits. his benefits to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. In the, in the presence, presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. Glory be to the Father, Glory and to the, the Son, Father, and, to the and, son to the and to the Holy, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was, as it was in the beginning, is now, is now and, and ever shall be, world without world end. end. Amen. Amen. Amen.
There we go. The second lesson is from 1 Peter. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Good morning, saints. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 
They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while we talked, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day so thankful that you are the one who gathers us together. Would you meet us in this time by your word and your spirit? We would know you more fully. We would experience your love and your truth and be changed for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What, um, what strange days we are living in. In case you wondered, there was no seminary class on how to lead church during a global pandemic. Um, and if there were, I might not have taken it, I'll be honest. But, but the reality is we're all figuring this out as we go. I want to give uh, just an, a special recognition and thanks to Matt, who has just been a great help to me and to our diocese in this time. I'm also I'm thankful for the technology that allows us to connect in this way. As I was looking at the scriptures preparing for this, uh, the first Peter actually is what drew me in because it just seemed so appropriate. Peter was writing to a people who were being persecuted. And while we are not being persecuted here in the States, there are some things that I find are similar. So if you look, for example, in chapter 4 and verse 12, you see that, that they were surprised by what was happening. They were not expecting it, and they were certainly not prepared for it. Their lives have been turned upside down, and they were experiencing this longer than they would have expected, and they were afraid. Does that sound like familiar to anybody else? What caught me most in looking at this is actually the word that Peter uses by the, the people in verse 1 of chapter 1, to God's elect, exiles, scattered. We are a scattered people right now. And we don't have the ability to physically be together. And that's, that's a piece of it. And so there's a place where we, we are scattered. We're not the gathered people. We're scattered. And, and scattered can feel incredibly lonely because you can't connect in the same ways. And, and in that, when you feel alone, you begin to live as if life is up to me. And it is very easy to get discouraged. But not only are we physically, I think we are scattered emotionally. I mean, does anybody else feel this? Do you feel scattered at all? It might manifest as, as exhaustion or, or maybe a shorter temper or, or the inability to get things done no matter what those lists are. Or, or you just want to zone out in front of the television. Or maybe even just a sense of resignation. You know, it is what it is. We are scattered in our day in more ways than we can see. Our routines are scattered. Our dreams are scattered. Our plans are scattered. Vacations and weddings and funerals. There's so much in 1 Peter uh, that, that, that I think is helpful for us in our day because it was written to a scattered people who are living life that was different than what they expected. And in our section today, verse 13, it begins with the word therefore. So we're just going to briefly look at what came before because there are a couple of key things. In this greeting uh, that Peter has in verse 1, he also establishes the identity of those to whom he is writing. They are God's elect. They're the ones that God has chosen and has sanctified. And what you find in the next 12 verses uh, up through verse 12 is that that Peter is actually rooting that truth in deeper. 
rooting in even deeper the sense of, of their identity in Christ and how that happens. It is not something that's done by our effort, but it is purely by God's grace. And this then becomes the lens through which we are to look at the world and look at the trials that we face. We have to be oriented to who we are in Jesus, to our identity in Jesus. And that can be so easy to lose sight of anytime. But even more in a season like this, we need to constantly be reoriented to our identity in Christ because the world, the flesh, and the devil gain the most traction in our lives when we lose who we are. Because then our lives are marked by grasping and striving and anxiety. And then we can so easily doubt that we are God's beloved. And of course, some ways that makes sense. Why do we doubt it? Because we are well acquainted with our sins and our weaknesses. And then that happens. We might be more acquainted with our feelings than we are with Jesus and what he has done for us and who he has made us to be. So this is the importance of what you find in verse 3, where it says, through the resurrection of Jesus, we have a new birth. This is actually the lens for all that follows in, in 1 Peter. We are born again, as Jesus says in John chapter 3. We go from sin and death and shame, being in the dominion of darkness, to life, glory, and righteousness, and the kingdom of God. We move from being enemies of God to being the beloved children of God. This is important because in our rebellion in Genesis 3, we became a scattered people. Uh, the scattered life is actually what, uh, what Peter's referring to in verse 18 when he talks about the empty way of life. This scattered life began in our rebellion because our rebellion, our sin, it breaks our lives. It breaks our relationship with God. It breaks our relationship with one another. It breaks our identity as those who were originally created, clothed, and crowned with glory and honor. And the world, the flesh, and the devil take these broken pieces and scatter them. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put us back together again. It takes the king entering into our brokenness, coming as one of us, dying for our brokenness so that we can be gathered in. This is the picture of new birth. We are no longer these broken pieces that are scattered about. We have been made whole in Jesus. And on top of that, we are then gathered with our Father who loves us. And then we are gathered with one another as his body. This is the gift of God. It is his great mercy, it says, that this happens through. His kindness, his compassion. It is not something that we attain by earning it or by our own efforts, by our own intellect. It is not something that we can get simply by figuring it out. We can't give birth to ourselves. This is the good news of what he has done for us. This is something that we can only receive. We are put back together as the beloved children of God. We are restored to relationship with the Father and with one another. And that is the foundation of, what all, of all that follows in 1 Peter. Because that means if we know that truth, we can know, even when we don't understand the circumstances around us, that Jesus is with us that he is for us, that the Father delights in us, and who we are and the glory he has for us cannot be taken away. Because nothing is greater than Jesus. And what he began in us, he will finish. He does not abandon his own. And this is the foundation for what Peter is writing in the section we're looking at today. Because what Peter is writing about in this section is, is how do we live into the truth that we are actually gathered together, that is scattered and seeks to scatter. Verses 13 through 16. Therefore, with minds that are fully alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Now, Peter is actually laying out our response to who Jesus is and what he has done for us. These are not things we do in order to get God's approval. These are the things that we do because we have already been made children of God, sons and daughters of the King of Kings. 
And what Peter is saying in one sense is recognize who you are and then live that out. Verse 13, I, I think uh, translation is better saying, therefore, fully set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed by making your mind ready for action and being self-controlled. Fully set your hope. Um, hope, biblically, is not just a wish for the future. Biblically, hope is an assurance. Because uh, our hope is not based on something that we hope will happen in the future. Our hope is rooted in what already has happened in the past, in the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Everything changed when Jesus rose from the grave. And now the future is guaranteed. The new creation, new heavens and new earth are actually guaranteed because of his resurrection. What Jesus set in motion in his resurrection will be brought to completion. Uh, the new creation is actually just an outworking of what was accomplished in the resurrection. It's the same thing you see with, with the judgment of God on that last day. It is not some kind of new wrath that, that God has woken up to because of our sin. Because we know that God fully poured all of his wrath on Jesus on the cross. See, the wrath that we see on Judgment Day is just an outworking of the cross. Just like the new creation that we see is actually just an outworking of the resurrection. So we can fully set our hope because we have an assurance that this will take place. Because these things are rooted in and an outworking of his cross and his resurrection. It says our hope is to be fully set on the grace that will be brought to us. Now, first of all, you can look at this as the, the grace that will be brought to us is, is knowing that since Jesus took the punishment we deserve on that day, we will receive grace and not wrath. But it's actually deeper than this. Hope, biblically, always has a present experience. It's not just something that is future. It's actually something that we can know and experience now. And this is the same when we talk about grace. The grace that will be brought to us is actually fully present with us today. It is just not fully realized in our lives. But we are, our lives are all uh, wound up with this grace. We are saved by grace. Our sanctification is actually by His grace. When we step into glory, that is by His grace. Now, we won't fully realize the grace of God until we are in the new creation, but we are also already new creation. Right? That, that, that there is something of this grace that we actually can know now. It is fully here because of His cross and resurrection. And it is fully realized by us in the new heavens and the new earth. Fully set your hope. It is not easy to fully set our hope on anything, is it? The world, the flesh, and the devil want to scatter our hopes so that we live as scattered people with our hopes set on Jesus and... Maybe our hope set on Jesus and our abilities, our accomplishments, our relationships, or our resources, our intelligence, or our health, or whatever it is that we think we can control and manipulate to either get life or protect life. What this pandemic has revealed is where we have set our hopes. And often for those in the church, it might also reveal and, on Jesus and. Which is why we can feel hopeless as the things that we have placed our hope in are taken away. To fully set our hope is a challenge. Because we want to hedge our bets, right? We love having a backup plan. Fully set your hopes mean that there is no backup plan. I am all in. And that feels vulnerable and that feels risky. And fully is actually beyond our ability. This is why Peter then says, by making your mind ready for action, by being self-controlled. Having our mind prepared for action. In other words, we don't fully set our hope by the power of positive thinking. We do it by thinking and acting out who we truly are in Jesus. 
Making your mind ready for action is actually living out. There's action, living out the truth of who we are as a new creation, those who have been given a new identity. This is the call to be holy. If you have been given this new birth, then there is a complete transformation of who you are. It's not just an improvement. It's not a CAN 2.0. It's not a beta version. This is the new identity. It is a new nature. We are new creations. And our lives then are to reflect who we are. The call to holiness, it's not about a list of do's and don'ts. You've got mind. It's a call to be more fully who you are as children of God. Now, there are still, yes, things that we are to do and things we are not to do, but that is actually something to remind us of what it is to live into who we are in Jesus. So how do we do that? It says, Peter writes, by being self-controlled. You have to remember context. Self-control is not about our determination and our willpower. Self-control is part of the fruit of the Spirit. This is not, I'm going to make it happen. It's not my will that makes it happen. But it's also not that I just sit back and I do nothing. This is about God, the Holy Spirit, enabling us to choose, giving us the power to live into who we are as new creations. Now, that, that word self-control, it carries with it uh, this sense of, of not becoming intoxicated. It takes the Holy Spirit in us to not be intoxicated by the seduction of the world. It takes the Holy Spirit in us to not be intoxicated by the hopes that the world offers that are bound by this world, or the desires or the inheritance this world offers, which are bound by this world. It takes the Holy Spirit for us to live out who we are as those who have been made holy by the blood of Jesus. We can't refuse the seduction of the world. We can't stop ourselves from being scattered. It is beyond our ability. We need God, the Holy Spirit. First of all, uh, to, to help us see how desperate our need is, which we often try to hide from, but also to know the grace of his provision, that he is the one that empowers us, that he is the one who is with us, that he is the one that enables us, who brings the grace of God to us, so that even when we stumble, we know that he picks us up. There are a couple other things that are in this section that also are, are helpful for us in living out who we are as children of God, living out those who have actually been gathered in a world that seeks to scatter. The first is, is that we have this intimate relationship with God our Father. This place of, of being His children is mentioned again and again. It's this reminder that we don't choose holiness in order to get God to accept us. We choose holiness because he has accepted us. He has made us new. He has made us children of God. And there's this reminder that even in that, this intimate relationship, it does not give us license to do just what we want. This is not God uh, trying to spoil our party. This is a truth that God abhors the empty life. And he doesn't want his children to live a scattered life of futility and emptiness. This actually just reveals the depth of his love for us. The second thing we see in verse 17, it says, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. And I'm going to focus on reverent fear, but, but foreigners is also key. In one sense, you could say that that is, don't make this world your hope. It will scatter you. But reverent fear, reverent. This is not an unholy fear. This corresponds to the phrase you see in the Old Testament again and again, the fear of the Lord. This is not a fear of punishment. Now, the fear of the Lord it can certainly begin with a sense of dread that comes when we recognize our sinfulness and God's holiness. We recognize that because of our rebellion, we deserve nothing but the judgment of God. But the fear of the Lord is actually a journey. It might begin with the overwhelm of our sin, but it actually takes us to the place of being overwhelmed with God, to be overwhelmed at his holy love and his grace, which is for us who do not deserve it and can never earn it. In fact, the phrase, fear the Lord, as it's used, especially in the Old Testament, it actually describes worship. It's this place of, 
of the overwhelm of God's goodness and his grace for us, which takes us beyond a focus on ourselves and our inadequacy and our sins into worship, into the wonder and awe that he rescues us, that he is for us and he is not against us. Reverent fear, the fear of the Lord, it is key to living into who he has made us to be. Because when we lose a fear of the Lord, we actually lose ourselves. We lose who we are in Jesus. And then we're more likely to be overwhelmed by our sin and our inadequacy and then try to fix that on our own, or cover it on our own. And when we lose a fear of the Lord, it gives the devil's taunts and seductions uh, much more traction in our lives. Because then we are self-conscious and we are self-focused and we are self-protecting because we don't trust God's love and grace for us. See, fear of the Lord, worship, it's meant to reorient us. This is why the command to worship is found in Scripture more than any other command. It's not for God's ego that he needs to hear how great he is, right? It's actually for us that it actually shapes our heart. It reorients us to who he is and the truth. This is why Peter reminds us in the context of this fear of the Lord, in the context of reverent fear of worship, that we were purchased at a great cost by the blood of Jesus. Because that reveals how much we are loved. It reveals the worth that he gives us by paying this great price. Do you see the worth that has been given to us? You determine the worth of something by what you're willing to pay for it. Do you see the worth that God has given us? That he's willing to pay his son, his son's life and death, that we might be gathered together. This is what leads us into worship. This is actually what mutes the enemy's seductions. This is what reorients us to Jesus. What he paid for us the value that he has given us, that we are now sons and daughters of the King of Kings, and that he gives us the Holy Spirit to live into that truth. This is a real hope. This is the grace that gathers us in when we feel scattered. This is what we need in our day. Because we have an opportunity in our day. The more that we stand into this grace, the more that we can reach out to others. Because we know that we have nothing to lose, that we have nothing to prove, and that we lack no good thing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that when we are scattered by our sin, when we are scattered by the winds of this world, you are the God who gathers us in that you take our scattered pieces and you make us whole, children of God. And then you empower us by your Spirit to live as a gathered people in a world that is always seeking to scatter. Father, we come and we ask that where we feel scattered, would you by your Spirit bring the truth into our hearts that you have gathered us in? that you have made us whole, that we are gathered with you and we are gathered with one another, even though physically we cannot gather together. Father, would you bring into us a deeper awareness and understanding by your spirit of what you have done for us, who you have made us to be, that that would become the lens that we see our world through, that we would know that we have been gathered even as the world is scattered. And then that we can stand in your grace and that we can be part of your work of gathering others in. In our day, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll have just a little bit of silence as we let the word uh, proclaimed and preached uh, sink into our hearts and minds.
with Christians down the centuries and across the nations, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we praise you for your creation and all you richly provide. All governments rule under your authority. May they work for the good of those they rule. Support those who are engaged in industry and commerce, the media and education, sport and the arts, raising children and maintaining homes. Comfort and strengthen those who are gripped by poverty, weakened by illness, or oppressed by cruelty. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, our times are in your hand. As they begin another year, look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Sophie Kalua, Joseph Wilcox, Catherine Carmody, Ford Saxenmeyer, Clay Clarkson, Robert Lejeski, and Sterling Sorrell. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen together. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Praying together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. To the almighty, merciful, and just Father, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. God's peace. We love you. Much peace. Much grace. So good to be here. And I get to see some uh, faces on the screen. So it's a joy to be here. Lord's peace. At this time, uh, we would normally take our offering. Uh, and I'll just take the opportunity to, um, to direct you to the website where you are still able to continue to uh, give and support the mission of the church. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, holytrinityanglican.church, uh, right up in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, of the website, you'll see a, uh, a link that says giving. Uh, you can click uh, through there and, uh, and continue to give in that way. So as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Is the Father with us? He, he is. is. Is Christ among us? He, he is. is. Is the Spirit here? He, he is. is. This is our God, Father, Father Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We, we are, are redeemed. redeemed. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. But chiefly are we bound to praise you, Father, because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his turning, rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory, and where life was lost, their life has been found. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our heavenly hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we may faithfully receive these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup, and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, 
saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, recalling his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all for the sins of the world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and leave us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them remembering that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ and all those who know and love him and desire to follow and obey him are welcome when it's time to take communion together. Alone in my soul dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to be Your love laid a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested I like you Ash was redeemed on My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to death. When death was arrested, I died. Oh, your grace so free washes over. Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom. He canceled my debt.
my Savior displayed on the criminal's cross. The darkness rejoiced as the women met. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That when death was arrested, my life So free, wash his own mercy. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love for me. Amen and amen. Praying together. Heavenly Father, we have eaten at your table and heard your word this day. Give us grace to receive it, understanding to know it, faith to believe it, and in this coming week, the will to obey it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to use my Episcopal authority and just change slightly um, one of the things that we do. All of our problems, we, we send, send to, the, to cross the cross of Christ. Christ. All of our sins, we, we send, send to the, the cross, cross of Christ. Christ. All the devil's work, we, we send, send to, to the, the cross, cross of Christ. Christ. And all of our hopes, we set, we set on the risen, risen Christ. Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and keep you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's peace, everyone. We love you so much, and we miss being together, but we know that we're together by God's Holy Spirit. We love you, and we love you. <laughs> we love you. Where's Sarah? Hi, everybody. Hi, Joe. Sunday. Hi, Gold. Hi, Hi, family. Uh, <laughs> start the video. It's in the bottom corner. Hello. <laughs> 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 family right there. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Although I think if we do this, that's just a video. There we go. Hey, everybody. Hi, <laughs> Hedix.